Welcome to Deep Thought. What if basketball wasn't invented? <laughs> and I know people looking at this like, oh man, how's Rom going to make something like basketball deep? Well, I'm going to use the example of basketball and a couple other examples to illustrate a bigger point. Now, I've talked about how a single person can create a whole new reality just from the choices they make. Just from... Um, you know, their decisions, how their decisions affect everyone else. But there's another part to it, right? The other part is there has to be a, a landscape, an environment, a horizon for them to do the work, right? Now, because uh, I was talking about this uh, with my mentor, and I mean, it's, it's some powerful stuff, something to consider. You look at Michael Jordan. Look at what he's done for basketball, See, I remember the days before Michael Jordan got in there or even before. I would say things changed in like uh, maybe pro basketball and probably all basketball, really, with Magic and Bird. Because before that, people were playing basketball. You had the basketball leagues, but it was just it wasn't what it is now. Money wise, international, all of that. Right. But then Michael Jordan took it to a new level. I mean, not just playing basketball. I mean, like shoes, because I remember when everybody was wearing Chuck Taylors and stuff. How much money he's made, uh, the athletic wear. He's had a phenomenal impact, right? You know, jobs, I mean, opportunities, like, great. Affecting millions, right? And, of course, you got all these guys who are making millions. And then um, secondary, you, you know, you're talking about owners, coaches, uh Basketball clinics, I mean, you got young kids. I mean, they scouting kids in elementary school. You know, they're playing it all over the world. A big impact. What if it wasn't invented? Right? And I was talking about this with my mentor. You know, think about it. If basketball wasn't there, you just had some tall, some tall dudes walking around. <laughs> they have to find something else to do. You know? They wouldn't, I mean, you got people making millions and... Uh, making an impact in life because then a lot of these guys, uh, you know, they'll do some charity and all of that. A lot of relationships that wouldn't have happened. But what if uh, James Naismith years ago didn't like figure, okay, I need to keep my football players in shape. Let me let me get this little game right here going where they have to put this pole, you know, this little ball in this basket. What if it wasn't? That, that horizon wouldn't be that way. And let me give you something else, too, because I was, uh, people know me from my relationship channel, and, you know, I'll talk about that, you know, womanizing dude, that Mr. Goodbar type, right? What if the sexual environment was different? See, the environment we live in today. The environment we live in today is interesting. It, it is tailor-made for a womanizing man. I mean, people complain about all the relationships and, you know, going bad, marriage, which is actually, believe it or not, marriage is actually slightly going up. But that that's something for another channel. But, you know, you got a lot of stuff out here and... Um, but a womanizing dude, a dude who has some sex appeal, he can he can go crazy. He can be open about it. Used to be he had to be the back door man or something like that. Now he can he can go on national TV say I'm a womanizer, you know. But if you think about maybe 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, a dude doing all of that would have been killed. Think about it. But what happened was we have a different horizon, a different environment. And I'll give you a final example, even listening to this uh, podcast. Think about it. You have thousands of people out there who make their money just doing exactly what I'm doing now. I mean, you've had millionaires. Or if you think about it, on YouTube, you have like... 20 year olds who are millionaires. I mean, little kids who are millionaires just because they get a lot of views and not even do anything controversial, putting together a toy or just playing a game and explaining it. Or, you know, I know of this uh, young couple. I wish I had kept their name. I had to catch up with a friend of mine to find out their name. They make it millions of dollars just, and as, she, as my friend said, 
just doing dumb stuff on YouTube. Not even like anything significant, just having people follow them. Right? Somebody, when somebody came up with the whole video sharing concept or this concept of it, they created a horizon, an environment for other people to make money. They created it. I mean, it's working for uh, working for me. It's working for me. I can actually, I can honestly say I can pay all of my bills just off of what I make off YouTube. So that's not even including all the money I'm, I make away from it. And even then, I'm doing a lot of stuff on podcast and other videos on other sites and everything. And even the writing. Years ago when I started writing... The environment wasn't there for me to really get out the stuff, though. I mean, I could get out stuff, but not to the same extent. When you talk about ebooks, hardcovers, when you talk about being able to write blogs, the environment wasn't there. You know, when people first started talking about the internet, it was, you know, one of the main things was just selling products on the internet, which, of course, if you have products, now you can go all over the world. You know, and plus one of the other things, another thing that created the environment was just having the logistics, having the UPSs and the FedExes of the world that could deliver. And even then, somebody created an environment or a horizon where people could get their stuff across borders easy. You know, where we can cross the stuff. It actually created stuff. A lot of like a lot. There's a lot of people making money, a lot of millionaires now who if something like YouTube wasn't invented, or if someone someplace started the path to like uh, making making it easy to send stuff across borders, or someone didn't um, create the underwater cable so, you know, we can communicate more instantly and stuff, have the internet, you know. If someone hadn't done that, it'd be a different thing for many people. Now, think about something now. I'll use myself as an example. One of the things I didn't realize I had talent for, because I took it for granted, was just speaking, speaking my mind, having subjects to speak about, having people, having been able to present myself in such a way that people would even listen. But, you know, at first, years ago, it was it would have been hard to break into broadcasting. There's a lot of people who were talented, because if you look at broadcasting, you look at uh, publishing, a lot of it, there was a lot of luck involved. You have some talented people just because they didn't know the right person. Sometimes because, oh, shoot, I mean, I'm just going to be real. If they were black or um, another quote-unquote minority, they might not have been able to get in. Or they just didn't have the right connection, even if that wasn't a case. You know, you, you, there was, it was very controlled for, like, a lot of media. If you had a book, I mean, you pretty much had to find an agent. Then you had to find a publisher. Shoot, now you can take it right. You got people making a good living because they can take it right to the people. But it had to be a, a horizon there for them to do it. See, it's not just the one person. I mean, a person can have a great idea, great talent, but there has to be a horizon for them to share that talent. Like you have a person, they could probably paint, I don't know, rocks. We had a pet rock craze. They could paint rocks real well. It's real pretty. But the horizon isn't there for them to make money off of it. But say something happens, all of a sudden people have a demand for painted rocks. Boom. So it's like more than just what you're doing. It has to be an environment. It has to be something where it's uh, conducive. You know? Like say if somebody had, um, i give you an example, polygamy. Now, it's practice, it's practice uh, most of the world in, in a de facto sense in, this, in the United States, but it's still very little. Now, what if someone say, hey, you know what, we, we, we have gay marriage. Why don't we change the law so people can marry whoever they want and as many people as they want? That would change the landscape. Now, all of a sudden, you get some guy, instead of him having to cheat on his wife or something or... Instead of him have to cheat on his wife, he can just say, "Okay, wait a minute, I got the laws now. We can, I can just bring her into the family, and you know, instead of everybody running around, we all work together." 
Like I say, that happens anyway, but it's still, you know, the person, the second or third quote unquote wife doesn't have protection. But you change that environment, it might change the relationship thing. Or, you know, you have a lot of people talking about polyamory, open relationships. What if that's more normalized? What would it do? You know, a lot of people who are stuck in bad situations or situations where they want to cheat, all of a sudden it's like, boom, it's more open. And I know, and I know people say it's, you know, it's happening anyway, but it's still frowned upon. And, you know, a lot of people won't do anything because it's frowned upon. I mean, if you look at any movement, any movement, any idea, there had to be something there first, you know, or even just this communication. I mean, what if uh, the people who really found radio waves and everything didn't happen? They didn't create that environment. Like even now, we don't know what... You know, there's always talk about automation and all of that stuff. We don't know what environment that might create. You know, it might free up or, or I use an example, universal basic income. And I know this is something more for my business channel, but think about it. There are a lot of artists who support it. They want to see it because there's a whole lot of artists who they can't really focus on their art because, well, they have to eat. They have to make money. You have a lot of writers. You have a lot of musicians who want to just focus on their art. How many would all of a sudden actually put money back into the economy, make money, become, you know, at least, at least able to take care of themselves, maybe millionaires? What if you have an artist just because they can focus on their book or focus on their music? They actually create something which actually empowers other people. If the environment is there for it. See, that's the key thing to get with all of this. You can have the talent, but then you have to have the environment to express that talent. Or whatever your skill is. Like I said, a lot of stuff I'm doing now, I wasn't, I wasn't able to do 20 years ago. You know? It was a lot of stuff. It's like, why I'm succeeding now is because the environment has changed to the point where it's conducive to what I do. And see, understand that. So you have a lot of people walking around. They probably got some stuff to bring, but it has to be an environment to do it. So that's why I use that basketball example. Now, you got some talented dudes playing basketball, but if basketball wasn't here, these tall dudes might just be a burden <laughs> or just looked at as freaks or something. But they have, they have an outlet, you know. I remember what my grandmother said. You know, she said if I had kept growing, because I had a growth spurt. Like uh, between, I say, around when I turned 13, I had a serious growth spurt. Because if I had kept up, if I hadn't had the growth spurt, like I'm 5'11 now, at the pace I was at, I'd probably be about 5'6 now. If I didn't have that, I mean, when I say growth spurt, like boom, shot up like a sprout, right? Grandmother had said to me, if I had kept growing, she would have put me in every basketball camp she could find whether I wanted to go or not. So she, you know, think about that. But those basketball, you know, you had to have that sport there for them to do that. Or even, um, like, you could use football, any sport, really. You know, there has to be an environment for that. You know, people weightlifters and stuff. There has to be a, an environment, you know, you know, competitive bodybuilder. Somebody has to do it. So sometimes, yeah, it's important people can make a change, but then it's also important for someone to create that environment. Not necessarily for themselves, but for other people. You know, and they probably not thinking about it. They probably, it's not, it's not a situation where they say, okay, I got to create an environment. They probably just doing something normal. So anyway, right? That's it for today. Just keep, just think on this. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.